Hi guys, welcome to Linux Hub YouTube channel. My name is Ram Mishra and I am your online instructor. So what's in this video? In this video, we will talk about multi-container pods in Kubernetes cluster. So guys, let's begin the topic. But before starting the last session, we need to understand few points, which is what is multi-container pods and its use cases in Kubernetes cluster. So uh, this is the official documentation of Kubernetes, and here I am communicating between containers in same pod using the shared volume. And if I scroll down, here they have mentioned how we can create a multi uh, <coughs> multi-container pods. So <coughs> sorry, <coughs> here the thing is mentioned: pod is a basic execution unit of Kubernetes application. Pod can host multiple containers that form a single unit of deployment. These containers share the same network space, network name space, which means they can communicate with each other using the local host and share the same IP or port space. Multi-container ports encapsulate multiple containers into a single deploy object, right? So in simple term, we can understand multi-container pod is running one or more container inside the same pod. So the primary purpose of primary purpose of multi-container pod is to support co-located or co-managed helper process for a main program. One of the most popular ones is the sidecar pattern. The sidecar pattern can be used to log the main application logs, or they can be a helper container that can be used to act as a reverse proxy and host the static file from the main container, or it can be used to send out network traffic to the outside world. So in this demo, we will learn how to create multi-container port, right? So uh, you can follow the documentation for more information, how you can go with that one, creating a pod that runs two container, right? So <coughs> let's begin the lab session. Let me go my VM. So guys, here you can see I'm working on a single Linux machine and where I have already installed Minikube and single node Kubernetes cluster. So let me show you the OS release version of this machine and then the Minikube status. So let me remove it. Here you can see it's Red Release 9.3 and if you talk about Minikube status, so yeah, it is running and configured, perfect. So before moving to next, we need to verify the status of cluster. To check the node of uh, availabilities, node availabilities in the cluster, we need to run the command kubectl, kubectl get nodes, right? So here you can see my Minikube is, node is ready to in ready condition and once our node is ready we can create our pod files and we can deploy right so now we will check the list of the port first in the default namespace command is kubectl get ports so currently no resource found in the default namespace now move to the first step which is launch our multi pod in community cluster so let's create a file let me check the directory. Yeah, I have a directory k8s Kubernetes, and currently I don't have I don't have any contain inside this file. Let me check. Yeah, it's clear. Okay, so the uh, this code could be based on JSON or YAML format. So let me write down multi uh, say multi pod dot YAML. Okay, now. Uh, point come how we can get the code so for getting the multiple port multiple code for this one what we will do we will go with the documentation so here you can see the code is here so how we can create uh, creating a pod that runs two containers so this is the code this is the complete code right we can copy the entire thing and you can follow the same thing so you can copy this code from here and modifying according to your your project right so i have already copied this code and modify for you in a simple term uh, for the demonstration right so let me show you where it is so i'm going back on my notepad this is the code which i have already modified for you let me copy and paste it perfect let me go line by line and i will explain each and everything so uh, here here we will start with the first of all API version. API version define the version schema of the representation of an object. Then we have a kind, kind means kind of object you want to create. So here it is it pod since we are going to create a pod. Later on we can change the kind also. Name, name must be unique within the namespace. So I have just mentioned the multi pod. This is the name of my Kubernetes pod. Then specification. Specification spec means uh, the desired behavior of the pod, right? So I start with the restart policy. Specify the container in the pod should not be restarted automatically. Then I have started with the volume. So 
I first of all I give the name define an empty directory volume name HTML my volume name is empty and uh, my volume name is HTML and it is in empty directory that will be used for sharing the data between the containers empty directory that containers can use to share the data then we will start with the container tag so container first of all I'm going to get first container which will be used serving the web content the name is first one second uh, the image this is the docker image to use for the nginx container then i use the volume mount right and mount the html volume earlier we have created the html volume here so i just use the name the same name name mounts the html volume inside this nginx container the path where you will be mount so the path is usr share nginx html the path where nginx serve the content right so this is the path where the nginx, uh, NGINX looking for the html web page right Similarly, I'll create another container named second, second container for data manipulation. The image is Docker image based on the daemon container. It could be anything. Then I use the same volume mount point, mount the HTML volume inside daemon container. And then in the mount path, earlier the path is USR share nginx HTML for nginx. Here the path is slash HTML within the daemon container for working with shared data, right? Then the command, what command I want to execute here. So I specify the command to run within the daemon container. So I use while script, I run the while loop script that every 60 second uh, interval to append the date command output in the HTML flag, in the HTML file, right? So this is, this is uh, basically in this example, what I'm going to demonstrate to you. Here we can, uh, here basically we can share the volume using multipod container. So we define a volume named HTML and its type is empty directory. Volume that is first created when a pod is assigned to a node and exists as long as the pod is running on the node. As the, as the, as the name says, it is initially empty, right? The first container runs Nginx server and has the shared volume mounted on directory USR share Nginx HTML. And the second container name, uh, container used Debian image has the shared volume mounted on the directory slash HTML. The second container append every one minute current date and time into the index.html that is uh, located in the share volume because it's, it's a HTML and index.html file is there, right? Nginx server read this file and transfer it to the user for each HTTP request to the web server. So now my file is ready to deploy. Let's deploy it, okay? So I'll save and quit from here and uh, let's deploy with the kubectl command cube kubectl apply hyphen f my file multipod.yml perfect so uh, we can get the details of pod using kubectl get pod command kubectl let it be go get pods hyphen o void hyphen w watch condition see 0 slash 2 container creating okay if everything is okay within a few of minute it will be available for us yeah two by two is running perfect and we get the pod id 10.244.0.7 so it's ready and running on my mini cube node so you can check that the pod is working and either we can exposing nginx port or accessing it using the web browser or or another way is that we can check that shared directory directly in the containers so let's move to the both method one by one and we will check that one so First of all, I'll take my SSH to my Minikube node and hit the IP, right? So, Minikube SSH, sorry, not SSD, sorry, SSH. curl command, C-U-R-L, curl, and the IP address is 10 10.244.0.7. So yeah, hi, this is the output coming from second container on uh, 23rth of Jan, 1328, right? So if you observe, if I go with multipod container, this is the thing which I have mentioned here, right? This is the output coming from second container and date and time, right? It is in the second one. So it will be changed at every one minute. So if I go back, see, 1328, now 1329. It's reflecting, perfect. So you can see uh, output of my VLOOP script is reflecting here, right? Let's go with the another method. Check the share directly, uh, directly in the container. So for that one, what I can do, I'm here, uh, we can, uh, first of all, we can describe the pod. So command is kubectl described, describe uh, pods, and the pod name is multipod. Uh, what was the pod? The pod name is, yeah, multipod, perfect. Multipod, okay. See, 
if I go to the above one, here you can see the name of the pod, the default one, the node IP, and container, first container, container ID, second container, container ID, and if I go with the scroll down, successfully pull the image and create them. So here we can see uh, we, we have a container, first and second container running in the same port, right? So let's execute cat command and check the result on both container. So command is, uh, let me copy the command from my notepad. Here it is, these are the command we can use. So this is for the first one container. So I run the command kubectl, exec, execution, the pod name, hyphen c, the container, first hyphen hyphen bin cat command and give the path. The, this is the path of my first container, usr share, nginx html, index.html. So you can see it is updating every mon one minute, right? Even if I go for the second one, the second one is only for HTML, right? Because I have mentioned the path here, you can see that mount path is only HTML, right? HTML index. So I can check it from here also. This is for second one. We can see the uh, updates are there. Even if you want to move inside the container, you can also use the bash shell script, right? Or you can go with the bash one. So here it is, we can go with this one, kubectl, if you want to move inside the container, kubectl, sorry, kubectl execution it multipod container first and bin bash. So now I am in my first container. So you can see cat etc os release, it's stable Linux, us char, share, nginx, and here we have html, and here we have index.html. See, it's updating here. So, guys, this is how, uh, sorry, exit from there. So you can see. Uh, we can move inside the container also, right? And if you want to, uh, if, if I go back on the mini cube status and if I check the curl one more time, you will see the updated result, right? So if you want to remove the pod, it's very simple. You can run the command kubectl, just like apply, we can delete that one. D-E-L-E-T-E, -E -E, delete. Perfect. So it's deleted. Just wait, let it be complete. Let me go back from the mini cube. Port, multi port deleted. So till it is going to be deleted, let me explain the primary reason that ports can have multiple container is to support helper application that access to, uh, a primary application, right? Typically example of helper applications are data pullers or data pusher and proxies. Helper and primary application often need to communicate with each other. So typically this is the done through a shared file system as shown in this demo. An example of this pattern is web server along with the helper program that pulls a GitHub repository for every new update, right? You can see it's deleted. We can check cube seat cube uh, CTL get port command. See, no more ports are available, right? So soon I will come up with another interesting topic, guys. This is uh, that's all about this topic, and hope you will enjoy it and learn. And if you feel something I have missed, you wanted to know more something else, please reach out through my social media links, which is mentioned in the description. If you like this video, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe my channel, and press the bell icon button for the latest update. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and goodbye.